Gary suggested we go for a drive in our new two-door BMW coupe. In the parking lot, we slipped into a bucket seats. Carrie took over from there. At nearly 90 miles per hour, she zipped us up to that windy edge known to some as Mulholland, a sinuous road running the ridge of the Santa Monica Mountains, where she then proceeded to pump her vehicle in and out of turns, sometimes dropping down to 50 miles per hour, only to immediately pin it back up to 90 again. Fast, slow, fast, fast, slow. Sometimes a wide turn, sometimes a quick one. She preferred the tighter ones. A sharp, controlled jerk swinging left to right before driving back to the right, only so she could do it all over again until after enough speed and enough wind and more distance than I'd been prepared to expect, taking me to parts of the city I rarely think of and never visit. Hey, pretty, don't you wanna take a ride? I can't remember the main things I started babbling about then. I know it didn't really matter. She wasn't listening. She just yanked up on the emergency brake, dropped her seat back, and told me to lie on top of her. On top of those leather pants of hers, extremely expensive leather pants, mind you. Her hands immediately guiding mine over those soft, slightly oily folds, positioning my fingers on the shiny metal tab, slow and round like a tear, then murmuring and murmur so inaudible that even though I could feel her lips tremble against my ear, she seemed far, far away. Pinch it, she'd said, which I did, lightly until she also said pull it, which I also did, gently parting the teeth one at a time down under and beneath the longest unzipping of my life. never even kissed or looked into each other's eyes, our lips just trespassed on those inner labyrinths hidden deep within our ears, filled them with the private music of wicked words, hers in many languages, mine in the off color of my only tongue, until as our tones shifted and our consonants spun and squealed, rattled faster, as seated, raced harder, syllables soon melted into groans or moans, finding purchase in new words or old words or made up words until we gathered up our feet and refused to release it, enjoying too much the dark language we had suddenly stumbled upon, prayed to, carved to, not a communication really, but a channeling of our rumored desires. Hers for all I know gone to black forests and wolves, mine banging back to the familiar form, that great revenant mystery I still could only hear the shape of, which in spite of our separate lusts and individual cries, still continued to drive us deeper into stranger tones, our mutual desire to keep cooking the burn, fueled by sound, her screeching mine. I didn't hear mine, only hers, probably counterpointing mine. A high-pitched cry, then a whisper dropping unexpectedly to practically a bark, a grunt, whatever. No sense anymore, and suddenly no more curves either, just the straightaway. Too bad dark languages rarely survive. Das nicht zu Hause, das nicht zu Hause sein. And that's my favorite drive.